My name is Angelique. I just graduated from college and am a newbie at my job. Angelique, you're a new employee training, right? Kind of like orientation? On my day off, my best friend, who I've known since kindergarten all the way through high school, asked me with curiosity. We went to the same college, but were different majors. She continued on to grad school, so she's interested in my working adult life. You won't believe it. We start with a morning run every day. They say it's part of building our stamina. What? Really? Everyone? It seems she got a first taste of the toughness of working life. Well, unless there's a particular reason, everyone up to their second year has to participate. Those with three years or more are free, but I think about half of the entire company still does it. The other half are doing things like crosswords or brain training exercises. Whoa, interesting. I totally skipped the exercise part, though. <laughs> she chuckled in a peculiar way. Our company motto is also unique. It's something like, always be healthy, work hard, play hard, and live a long, active life. So for the first 30 minutes after starting work, we have time for physical and mental exercises. That is really unique. Not that I, who's not even a working adult yet, should say anything. I can interact with people from all ages and departments. It feels like an extension of a club or group in school. It's fun. I really do love the company I've joined. But don't you seem kind of tired? You're really observant. I was taken aback by my best friend's sharp observation. Yes, overall the atmosphere at the company is okay, but there is one, if not the only, colossal obstacle. A supremely arrogant individual stands in my way. You want to quit? Oh, I see, just as I thought. You lack determination. The woman who is my manager is complaining bitterly with a deep sigh on a call with a part-timer who has been absent for a few days. Her loud voice, meant to be heard, seems to be filled with malice, pushing the other person into a corner. The manager, who is whispered as the queen of damaging sighs, has the destructive power to completely demoralize the person on the receiving end of her size. She's like, I'm taking a break, and then all of a sudden doesn't show up for days, neglecting her duties, and now she says she's quitting. How carefree. Just because she's part-time doesn't mean I'll let her get away with this. I'll push her to the very end. This goes beyond sarcasm. It's downright terrifying. The last day the part-timer came in, I noticed her body stiffen, tears welling up in her eyes. What's wrong? Are you okay? She had been scolded by the manager again. She was trembling as she spoke. It must have taken a lot of courage for her to make this phone call. Since the manager has no choice but to accept her resignation, it would be better to just let her go without any more sarcastic remarks. I found myself sighing instead. It's been about a month since I joined the company. Considering that the first week was just going round and learning from all the departments in the company, I've encountered similar situations twice in the short span of three weeks. It's so inconvenient. She hardly does her work and just drags everyone down. All I'm doing is pointing that out. The manager, secretly referred to as the empress in the company, always has deep wrinkles between her eyebrows. It takes effort to replace her. It's only natural that she should have the consideration to find a replacement and finish the handover before she quits, right? The tension spreads among the employees present as the manager seeks agreement. Everyone pretended to be focused on their work, nodding without making eye contact with the manager. However, oh, you, you seem to have a problem. Uh, well, as I was recalling the face of the part-timer, I was caught in the scrutinizing gaze of the Empress. I'll ask you, once you receive your salary, you should take responsibility for your work, right? Uh, yes. If asked just about the correctness of that statement, there's no other answer but to agree. Moreover, the manager was fully aware of this and deliberately directed the question at me. Do you think it's okay to act selfishly in the workplace? No, but selfishness is the enemy of work, right? I was about to argue back, but her loud voice cut me off, and in the end, I wasn't allowed to say anything. I regret that I couldn't do anything for the part-timer who was crying back then, and that I just let the manager have her way. That's bound to stress you out. I'm sorry I just keep complaining. I was supposed to be bragging about the company, but before I knew it, it was all just one-sided complaints from me. 
It's okay, it's okay. You can't keep things like that bottled up, and it's not your fault you can't argue back. If you resist too much, you'll be the next target. A manager who mixes up power and authority is the worst, right? Be careful not to get on her bad side, okay? Thanks. While expressing my gratitude to my best friend, I finally brought up the main topic. About the trip, I think I can cover the costs with my part-time job savings from college and my first paycheck. I'm thinking of taking my grandparents to the resort you told me about before. Do you think they'll be pleased? This was the real issue I wanted to discuss. She is well informed about traveling, having done so extensively with her family. Of course, the inn is one that even my picky grandmother was completely satisfied with. You can't go wrong. My best friend gave her approval with a smile. I'm glad I really want to make it a good memory since we're doing it. I was planning a trip with my grandparents using the money I had diligently saved up. My grandparents are the ones who raised me in place of my parents who passed away when I was young. I wanted to give something back to the two of them who always put me first and supported me, so I had been saving money from part-time jobs since my college days. Gifting a relaxing stay at a luxury inn with your savings and first salary, your grandparents will definitely be thrilled. Seeing my friend smile, my cheeks also relaxed. However, it was Friday afternoon, the day before the trip. I was called by the manager and went to her desk, and she said, Classify these by category and analyze them. They're documents to be used at the beginning of next week. She was wearing an unusually bright lipstick and had a smug smile on her face. Huh? I was suddenly faced with a pile of thick documents and my eyes widened in surprise. You want me to analyze this by the end of the break? There were several binders, each one being super heavy and they were all out of order. Just sorting and classifying them would likely take a whole day. And to analyze them on top of that, to my confusion, the manager said with a victorious air, I'm glad you understand my orders. You've been ignoring instructions recently, you see. Unable to hold back the unreasonable accusations, I decided to stand my ground. I hate to point out, but it's Friday, and there are barely two hours left until the end of the day. It's simply impossible to finish these documents by the beginning of next week. I tried to reply as calmly as possible. Ever since our part-time worker left, the Empress seems to have picked me as her next target and has been intensifying her harassment. Excluding me from office memos, issuing wrong instructions, and then blaming me for misunderstanding. On top of that, she piles on an unmanageable amount of work that clashes with my long-awaited vacation. It seemed like my objections didn't bother the manager at all. You're going to use it at the beginning of the week, right? It's fine if you come in over the weekend to finish it. Oh, and just to let you know, these documents are confidential, so don't take them home. Please wait a second. I tried to argue, but the manager said, I have a meeting soon, and I'm leaving directly from here today. Leaving a pile of documents on the desk and walking out. The next day as planned, I was under the traveling sky with my grandparents, seeing my stifle yawn after yawn. My grandparents worried. Are you okay staying up all night and then going on a trip? Maybe we should have canceled. I'm fine, don't worry. I was really looking forward to this trip today. Even so, my grandparents were worried about me because I'd worked all night and came home just in time for departure. Even though I had informed them in advance, it seems as though I'd caused them some anxiety. No, no, this won't do. It's a special trip, so I have to make it enjoyable. I cheered myself up and turned a smile towards my grandparents. Look at this view, it's amazing. The sea is so beautiful. Don't worry about me. I worked a lot so that I could enjoy delicious food at the inn, soak in the hot spring, and sleep soundly on a fluffy bed. When I acted in such a silly manner, my grandparents finally started to enjoy the view with a relieved expression. But a nightmare was waiting for me in the midst of all this fun. Did you finish the job I asked for? You didn't quit it, did you? A familiar voice startled me while I was strolling alone in the inn after checking in. Manager? Why? Out of all places, why here? As if hearing my inner voice, the manager snorted and left. Ha, 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 I ruined your weekend to teach you a lesson. I thought it was unlikely, but as I thought, you ignored my instructions, didn't you? The manager's words clung to me like a curse, and I was hit with a severe bout of dizziness. 
So you deliberately assigned me an unreasonable task to coincide with my vacation? The thought of being given work to ruin my vacation made me seethe with anger. But how did you know about my plans? I knew the manager had sharp ears, but this was astonishing. You were chattering away during break time. Where are you going? When are you going? Oh, I'm so jealous. You were so pleased being praised by everybody. It was hilarious. Eavesdropping. You're the one who was talking loudly. Realizing that my innocuous chats with colleagues were being carefully listened to, I felt a chill. Besides, I'm surprised. This inn is too good for you. Excuse me? As I tilted my head in confusion, the manager did her typical, Hmm. Huh? You don't get it. It's an eyesore to see commoners wandering around. Look, there's a rundown inn next door that's more your style. I don't understand what you mean. I know you find me an eyesore, but the rest is just insults and harassment, right? Just when my anger was about to boil over, that's when it happened. Is that what this is about? A voice of support came from behind me. Grandpa and Grandma too. My grandparents, whom I thought were drinking tea in the room, were standing behind me. Judging from their expressions, they must have heard almost all of my conversation with the manager. Um, this is... I hurriedly tried to explain, but my grandfather caught me off and spoke to the manager. Nice to meet you. I'm Angelique's grandfather and have been her guardian for many years. Perhaps it's quicker to tell you that I'm the honorary chairman of the trading company that was discussing a deal with your company the other day. At those words, the manager's face turned pale. What? The honorary chairman of the industry? But your name is different from this employee's. Yes, she goes by her maternal family name. Otherwise, she would be viewed differently as a member of a famous company's founding family, right? I don't want my precious granddaughter to have a tough time at the company where she works. Uh, I I'm terribly sorry. I had no idea. The manager's face turned even paler. Do you think ignorance excuses rudeness? What? Oh, no. Um... In contrast to my grandfather's calm demeanor, the manager was sweating profusely and frozen in place. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to relay a message to your company's CEO. I'm not interested in doing business with a company that has a manager like you. Well, wait a minute, please! Ignoring the manager's shrieking voice, my grandfather continued. My granddaughter joined a company with a great motto, stay healthy, work hard, play hard, and live a long life. I thought the existence of quirky managers was necessary for the growth of the company. But your personality and behavior are harmful, he concluded. If you disagree with what I say, you can ignore it or spread bad rumors about me. My granddaughter has been recording all of this with her camera. Let's see whose side the world is on. Then he left the scene. As my grandfather said, I had been recording from the beginning of the trip with a camera hanging around my neck to capture memories with my grandparents. I had forgotten, but the camera was still rolling at that moment. Ah. Uh, the manager, trembling, tried to cling to my grandfather, but was bluntly told, It's too late now, and collapsed on the spot. Wait a minute, can't you do something to help? After being coldly brushed off by my grandfather, the manager surprisingly turned to me for help. I refuse. You always say there's nothing a newbie like me can do. I gave back my manager the sarcasm she gave me just the other day. I managed to keep my anger in check and even managed to flash a smile. Yeah, I could probably be an actress too, I thought to myself. Then, at the start of the week at work, there was an issue with the manager. The executive who leads the running club was standing tall in our department since the morning. Our company creed is to be a company that practices living healthily, working well, playing well, and living a long life. We welcome hard work, but that doesn't mean forcing people to work especially not if it compromises their physical and mental health. Executives who dump unreasonable amounts of work on their subordinates are merely showing their lack of managerial skills. The managing director's voice echoed throughout the floor. Uh, excuse me? The manager, seemingly taken aback by being attacked first thing in the morning, was about to ask something calmly while clenching her fist. But the executive said, Here, we have the time cards from last Friday to today. There were five employees who came to work on Friday and stayed until Saturday morning. Three people worked on their days off on Saturday and Sunday, and this morning, Angelique came in early. The manager seemed more and more perplexed as she was presented with these records. Uh, um, what does that mean? I explained to the confused manager prompted by the managing director. If I may, 
You instructed me to finish organizing and analyzing a massive amount of data by the start of the week, and told me to work during holidays if necessary. But it was impossible for me alone. Just then, the executive happened to pass by, so I was able to consult with the people around me, and with the cooperation across departments, we managed to complete the task as you instructed, spending the amount of time and manpower I just explained. Since the running club members who helped this time were there at the executive's meeting. I took the opportunity to thank them again. I only worked from Friday night to Saturday morning, and early this morning after returning from the trip, I was hardly any help. But thank you so much for helping me. When I bowed, I received kind words in return, like, "We help each other out in times of trouble," and, "That's what running buddies are for." The manager finally seemed to have grasped the situation, and this time she came at me. Crossing departments, you say? I didn't authorize such a thing. She seemed intent on blaming me for overstepping her authority. I proved it. The managing director? At the managing director's words, the manager was frozen in shock. The newbie in the running group, who always had a smile on her face, was in deep trouble. When I heard the situation, I found out they'd been burdened with an absurd workload. It would have been fine to leave them be, but since it was work necessary for the company. I took charge and gained everyone's cooperation. I apologize for the post-approval, but first, the managing director stared at the manager. I can't forgive the base motives behind burdening a hard-working employee who's trying to be filial to their grandparents with an impossible task just for harassment. These were the most forceful words I'd ever heard the managing director say. The managing director's face softened a bit. The other day, my grandchild who visited me cooked up some fried eggs. Haven't recently learned how to make them. They were overly charred and even had eggshells in them—a real mess. But it was the first time my grandchild had cooked something with such dedication. To me, it was the best feast ever. He talked, overlapping his feelings for his grandchild with the sentiments a supervisor should have for their subordinates. Despite the kitchen being a complete mess from my grandchild's cooking, my wife was in high spirits all day. That's just how it is. When I told them it was delicious, the proud smile on the young face was the most endearing thing. The managing director's unexpected story brought tears to the employees' eyes as they shared memories of their own grandparents. I still can't forget the taste of the rice porridge my grandma made me when I was sick, and the pandaid my grandpa put on me, saying "pain, pain, go away," seemed to heal me faster. While almost bursting out laughing at the managing director's doting grandparent stories. I felt a lump in my throat, wondering if a present for their grandparents could elicit such an emotional response. The people who helped me that day told me as I bowed, "If you think you're causing trouble, the best way to show us respect is to go and have as much fun as possible." And they sent me off on my trip. I love this company, all of you, and of course my job. That's why it's so frustrating to see part-time workers and employees like me being targeted and quitting due to unreasonable demands. Saying this with all the courage I could muster, a warm round of applause erupted from those around them. However, the manager seemed irritated by this and confronted them. "Do you think it's okay to talk like that?" The managing director quickly reprimanded her. "Silence! If you want to stay with this company, you'll lose all your titles and privileges and be demoted to the same status as a new employee. Naturally, you'll be starting from today. So the employee who joined a little before you, Angelique, will be your senior." You should be careful with your words. Upon hearing that the president had also approved, the manager shook her head intensely and yelled, "No, I won't accept this!" But there was no help for her. Instead, everyone's cold glares focused on her. If you don't like it, you're welcome to submit a resignation letter any time. Well, what? This was the downfall of the manager known as the Empress. Afterwards, she was literally demoted to a rank and file employee. She stuck around the company for a bit, but maybe she couldn't handle the tough treatment she was getting because one day she just stopped coming in. A few days later, her resignation letter came in the mail. Around that time, our company was being covered on TV. The show, titled "Morning Exercise: Bonds Beyond Titles," was aired, and they even talked about me and my grandparents. I heard later that the viewers loved our company rule: don't tolerate unfairness. The unjust female manager remained anonymous, but the clients clearly knew who she was. Rumor is that she doesn't stand a chance of finding a job in the same industry again. 
Meanwhile, our company was able to do business with my grandfather's company without any problem. Working with relatives can be a bit embarrassing, but it also keeps me on my toes. Plus, I've become even more popular within the company due to my legendary showdown with the female manager. Wow, you're so motivated. I want to work with you once I finish graduate school. My best friend recently told me. I'm hoping that'll happen too. I've started saving again because I want to travel with my grandparents without any worries this time. It'll take time since all I can do is save bit by bit, but just sit tight, Grandma and Grandpa. I'm going to continue to cherish my precious time from here on out.